Hello and welcome to a series of introductory videos about Geographic Information Systems, or GIS. This is a set of videos that I'm specifically tailoring for introducing landscape architecture students to the world of GIS. And what I mean by that is, is that we as landscape architects often use information developed by natural resource professionals, geographers, um, sociologists, and others who study the landscape in a different way. That information is really important to us as we as landscape architects want to understand the landform or the land uses or what types of wetlands exist on the landscape and where are they. We also need to know about political boundaries or parcel boundaries, so understanding who owns which pieces of the land. And so a GIS system is set up to uh, help us gain access to that world of information and bring it down to help us support our projects. So here in this video, I'm actually starting off in an environment called ArcMap. And so I'll just show you how to get access to ArcMap. ArcMap 10.8.1. This is actually uh, a, a piece of software that was developed by a company called ESRI, or ESRI. ESRI was founded by a landscape architect, Jack Dangermond. Uh, Jack developed this specifically um, based on work that had been done at the University of Pennsylvania and at Harvard University in landscape architecture to try and bring together layers of information so that we could better understand and plan for the, the landscape. Now, many, many other professions now use GIS, and it's been to our benefit because that means there are other professions out there collecting spatial data and putting it in a place where we can use it. ArcMap actually is the industry standard for uh, ArcGIS. Now, in the last three years, uh, Esri has actually released a new software we'll be talking about here in a few minutes, but I wanted to start with this environment here in ArcMap, primarily because while there are many, many, many different buttons and lots and lots of different things uh, to interact with this in, in this environment, it's actually a much simpler software than the one that will be re replacing it. And so what I mean by that is, is that ArcMap is an environment that allows us to go ahead and create maps of information. And so this one's actually set up for Jasper Pulaski State Fish and Wildlife Area. And so this is this is a project that I worked on um, in fall of 21 uh, with the Junior Studio. And I'm just going to show you really quickly what what do we mean by geographic information? Well, as landscape architects, contour data can become is really important to everything we do, right? We don't always have a budget to pay a surveyor to go out and actually shoot a site. Usually that costs between five and $25,000 actually to have a surveyor develop a detailed uh, uh, detailed layout of the site that includes topography. We don't need that at the beginning of most master planning processes, but we do need accurate data. So fortunately, and this is how this was generated, um, the state of Indiana actually invests in using LIDAR. It's light detection and ranging uh, techniques, which means that they fly, uh, they fly an airplane over the state of Indiana that actually shoots a laser down at the ground that bounces back up to the plane and allows them to produce these very, very high quality. In this case, the precision is, um, it's precise to about one foot uh, in terms of its accuracy. So not as accurate as a surveyor would do, but certainly uh, well within what we need to start doing our work. But there's lots of other information that gets stored in geographic information data sets. And so I mentioned this is Jasper Pulaski State Wildlife Area. So what I've just pulled up here is actually the boundaries for the different counties. And so this is part of a statewide map that has all the counties, but I'm zoomed in on my site. And I can see that on the left-hand side in this polygon, I'm in Jasper County. And on the right-hand side, I'm in Pulaski County. And, you know, it's important then when we click on the, and you can see this is the boundary and you can see how it actually crosses into three counties in total and so each one of these counties um, realistically has a different relationship with the state and how they manage this property you can also see down here because of the graphic scale that i have that one inch equals a thousand feet this is a very large facility it's approximately eight thousand acres in size um, and you know certainly uh, would take a long time to go through and start you know, for one team of landscape architects to go through and start pulling together all the information we'd need about this site. And what I mean by different information about this site are things like land use. Well, how is the site currently used? You can see here that I've simplified down a land use layer to show you that, 
you know, this is all taken from uh, using aerial photographs and using using a set of software that allows us to extrapolate out the land use from that. But basically, it's simplified down here to what you're seeing is blue is open water, red is developed, so you're actually seeing the roads and the other, you know, this is the main maintenance facility. Uh, there's a parking lot and some buildings in that location. This is actually the gun range over here. And so you're seeing these, you know, hard urban uses, you know, so developed uses throughout the site. The dark green is forest. The lighter blue here is all wetland. Uh, and then everything that's in yellow is actually agricultural land. But sometimes we need more specific information than that. And so the federal government's actually supported the development of the National Wetland Inventory. And so I can actually zoom in now, and this is high precision data that is based on the soils, based on aerial photograph interpretation, and also based on field data that's been collected about these sites. So I can get very, very high precision. And when we talk about geographic information, it's important to know that, again, there's data hiding behind all of this. And actually, can, I can actually come in and I can sort um, the different wetlands by size. Um, and you saw much like you can do in Excel, you can go ahead and kind of pull all of this information together. I probably shouldn't have clicked on that because this is still set up for the entire state of Indiana. And so it's going to take a little while uh, to roll. And so I'm going to go ahead and pause my video real quick, let that go ahead and roll, and I'll jump back in. All right, I was able to go ahead and wrap that up. But again, there's lots of different things that we can do on a site. And so, um, you know, we can actually take the topography data and we can do things like developing hill shades for it so that we can actually see in you know, it's a 2D interpretation of what of what the landscape is actually doing here. And what you see really are that this is the largely kind of the wet and the flat part of the site. You can actually see cutting through the middle uh, of the site is actually the ditches. Their agricultural ditches were established. But then we also have these sand kind of, you know, sand barrens that have kind of blown in across this landscape. And you can actually go out and experience that on the site you know, on the ground. And so as you hike through the property, but again, this is one of many different forms of GIS. And so, but the basis of all of the software that you will use is that we take geographic information, which really doesn't change no matter what software you're using. We bring it into an environment where we can display it, we can analyze it, and we can edit that data. And that's what geographic information systems is all about. So before we leave here, I did want to show you some other pieces of the software. So one of the reasons that ArcMap is being upgraded is actually because ArcMap required uh, that all of our data be stored in a, in a special way. And basically what it is is that in order to bring geographic information together, you, don't, you, need, a, you need multiple files at, coordinated with one another in order to actually display that information accurately within a mapping environment. And what I mean by that is, is that you need a file that shows you the shapes. You need a file that says where those shapes are located at. You need a file that shows what projection system those shapes were recorded in originally so that it can be reprojected into your map. And so that's saying that lots and lots of complex things. Well, ArcMap relied on a program called Arc Catalog, and you'll see some remnants of, of this in the newer software that we're going to be working with uh, this year. Um, and that basically it created what is more or less a Windows Explorer, but it created a Windows Explorer just for GIS data. And so this is one of the reasons that we're moving on to the new software. The other one being that ArcMap, being software developed by landscape architects, despite being a very expensive piece of software, um, has been known for bugs and for not working right uh, since its original creation. Turns out landscape architects do not always make the best uh, computer software developers and programmers. So I wanted to show you quickly a few other things um, that exist out there uh, in terms of options to interact with geographic information. One of those that I think is really important for you to know about, let me see if I can bring it up real, real quick. There we go. Um, one of those that's really important for you to know about is actually called QGIS. QGIS uh, helps establish one of the things about Esri that has been a complaint for a long time. In order to have a desktop version of Esri products, and whether that be in the old ArcMap system or the new ArcGIS Pro system, you're generally talking about a fully functioning 
uh, version of it being about $3,000 per seat. So per computer in an office environment, it's about $3,000. To add on uh, the support tools that are necessary to make ArcMap really functional or ArcGIS Pro really functional, you actually have to buy independent packages that give you access to additional tools. And so it's really quickly, most firms can spend upwards of five or $6,000 per seat in order to have access to a software that will allow you to display and analyze uh, geographic information. So a number of, you know, a number of people out there and the growing number of professions using uh, GIS software um, actually think that this information, which most of the data has actually been paid for and developed by um, the federal government, state governments, or local governments, should be available and access to anyone. And so somewhat as a counterbalance to ArcGIS uh, and what Esri has developed, um, are softwares that are starting to jump out in the open source market. And what I mean by open source is free. And so you will find this in uh, professional landscape architecture firms that they, you know, there is a preference instead of paying $6,000 per seat um, to gain access to this software that free is out there. Now free comes with the caveat. This is basically being developed as a volunteer project. It's maintained as a uh, volunteer project which means that at any given point in time, this could all go offline and go away, which is certainly a concern. But I wanted to make you aware that it's available. It is not, it does not have as much functionality as the paid version, um, but it is also very, very good. And so there's nothing wrong with kind of exploring these free options. What you get for the paid options though, is that ArcGIS continues, you know, Esri and ArcGIS, on, you know, it continues to grow. One of the ways that they're growing is actually through ArcGIS Online. And so the way to get there is actually just Google ArcGIS. Once you get there, you'll get to this page. You go to sign in here at Purdue. We have to sign in using your organization's URL. And in our case, that's Purdue University. And then it's .maps.arcgis.com. You can click on Remember This. I'm going to leave it unchecked in case I have to redo this video. Um, then you have to click into here. And then I'm going to go ahead and pause real quick. Uh, no, it's actually not going to make me go through. Usually it'll make you go through your two-factor authentication. Uh, apparently I already have been through that and gotten it set up. Basically, when you jump into this, well, very similar to what you just saw a minute ago. If I go over and click on the map function, I can zoom in and I could actually go ahead and zoom in all the way uh, on Jasper Pulaski State Fish and Wildlife Area. You can actually see those sand ridges again and here's the wetlands. And I could actually go ahead and start dumping data here in the ArcGIS Online environment. ArcGIS Online does not have analysis tools or very, very limited analysis tools would be the right way to describe it. You can do a handful of things. You can create some charts, but it's really just for accessing and displaying information and very little else is possible in this environment. Great way to go explore the data sets that exist out there. I'm going to follow up with another video that shows you how to get access to some of that data in this environment. But before we do that, I do want to go ahead and introduce you to ArcGIS Pro. ArcGIS Pro is a different piece of software. Again, you can access it. The university has this uh, set up in the uh, image on your studio computers. Um, but ArcGIS Pro is set up here. You actually have to go ahead and sign in. I'm hoping it'll actually go ahead and carry my sign in. It did. Otherwise, you'd have to go through that two-factor authentication process again here. And I won't spend too much time today or in this video uh, focusing in on what ArcGIS Pro is or how to use it. We'll certainly follow. That'll be in the follow-up videos to this. Um, and I'm actually going to point you to some Esri products to help you uh, learn how to interact uh, and use the tools in this environment. And so, but again, the same basic rules apply is that whether in ArcMap, QGIS, ArcGIS Online, or in the new ArcGIS Pro, it basically gives you an option to bring in uh, arc data, you know, ge geographic information, uh, put it in together into a map that is context specific to whatever project you're working on, put those layers uh, on, on top of one another, and then organize that data set. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video at this point, and we'll go ahead and pick up uh, with how do you get access to all of this data.